Hey, thanks for joining me. Let's get right into it. Today, I am going to be talking about healing from your trauma. <laughs> trauma. Healing from your trauma and forgiveness. Okay. We've all been hurt before. If you haven't been hurt, oh, that's so great. God bless you. That's great. I'm so happy for you. It's, it's great. But for many of us, we have experienced our fair share of trauma. We have been hurt by the people we loved. We've had unmet expectations from people that have somehow broken our hearts into pieces. We've had people disappoint us in relationships. We've, and because of these hurt and pain that we've experienced, we have decided that we're not going to open our hearts anymore. I personally have been hurt deeply um by so many people that in fact i don't even have words i have hurt people i have believe i've hurt people disappointed people tremendously people that loved me and were rooting for me and so we all have some type of hurt one way or the other but what we're gonna talk about today is how do we deal with those hurt how do we heal from that trauma that we've experienced from people and how do we love ourselves through that trauma become better people through that healing process whether the person that has heard us apologizes or not how do we become better believers how do we become better christians how do we become better people overall you know by dealing with the trauma i don't want to miss words when i tell you that our inability to deal with the traumas that we've experienced from our past relationships and encounters has a way of totally destroying our lives. If we don't deal with the issues of our past, if we don't deal with the pain of our past, not only does it have the power and the ability to seep into the will and purpose of God for our current season, but they also have a way of actually delaying the season of God for our lives. So if we don't deal with the pain that we've experienced in the past, it is hard for us to be able to enter into the different dimensions of what God has willed and purpose for us. I listened to a very great woman of God called Shade Martin, who, you know, expounded truly the importance of walking in healing and getting well soon as a believer when we allow Christ to fully take over the pains of our hearts and deal with the issues of pain um, that are caused by other people. I think for many of us, we expect that our healing comes from the other person who hurt us. So if I was in a relationship with somebody and they disappointed and hurt me, I hold on to that pain and that disappointment because I'm hoping that somehow if the person comes to apologize, that is going to take the pain away. That is not true. A lot of the time, if we don't deal with the pain that we've experienced, it doesn't matter whether the person who hurt us apologizes or not, is not going to take away the pain. It's not necessarily going to restore us. It's not necessarily going to make us better. So one of the first thing key that is required to start in our healing is to understand the point that our healing does not depend on the person who hurt us. So whether the person who called you terrible or said terrible things about you behind your back, whether they come to apologize or not, that is not your business. Whether they ask for forgiveness or not, that is not your business. Your business is that you have to work on the purposes of your soul by going to God and asking God to deal with the trauma. And that's not it. That's not easy in itself. It doesn't, it's not a cliche when we say these things and then blah, 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 the pain just goes away. It's a working of the soul. It's allowing ourselves to be soaked daily in the word of God and looking first of all about what God says about forgiveness. Jesus told the disciples, he says that if somebody forgives you, what was a question that was asked by the disciples? He's 
says, how many times should we forgive others when they sin against us? He said, forgive them what? 70 times 77 times 77. That, that's a big number. <laughs> I'm not here to do much, but that's a big number. So that's a day. People are, a, I mean, per scripture, People can hurt us as many times as 77 times 70 whatever in a day and we are expected to still forgive them. So one, the healing journey or the beginning of our healing process is not dependent on new hoarders. It's dependent on us and God. Okay. So I just wanted to, you know, I have a few notes here that I want to like, you know, expound on it. So it says that the depth of offense against you requires that the offender, uh, repents only to God. So just as, you know, the person who hurt us doesn't have to come and apologize to, to us, right? They're only responsible in apologizing to God. And somebody will say, well, then no, but that gives people permission to do bad things. Actually, sometimes it looks like, like it, but the thing is for the purposes of our healing, that's not our business, right? It's not our business. The the people that are hurting us, they're answerable to God, right? They're not answerable to us. That's what Bible says, a vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So when somebody intentionally hurts you, it's not your job to deal with that person or make the person pay for the pain they caused you. That's the job of God. Our job is to allow ourselves to be worked on by the holy spirit so that that pain does not affect our will and god's will and purpose for our life so um it's very important to understand that the byproduct of that repentance can bring an apology but that is not a requirement so if the person that hurts you goes to god and somehow they they ask for forgiveness and god forgives them and they have a change of heart they may recognize that what they've done to you is wrong. So they may come and apologize, but that's not a requirement. God will not base somebody's repentance on an apology, right? So God will not base somebody's forgiveness. God will not say, because you didn't go and apologize, I'm not going to forgive you for what you did. I mean, there are certain things that God may ask the person to apologize for, but that's not a requirement. In the same way, when we hurt other people, we, we recognize that we've done something evil. We go to God and God forgives us. We don't have to necessarily go and apologize to the person before God forgives us. So they may come and apologize as a byproduct of repentance or them, you know, having a conscience, but that's not a requirement. So don't base your healing or forgiveness on somebody not apologizing because you may be walking around with a lot of hurt when they've already been forgiven by God and living their life and their purpose and you are in one corner brooding and allowing pain to stop you from doing that which God has called you to do trust me it's not a good thing I've been there um, where for years I held on to a lot of pain and disappointment and it's taken me years I'm still dealing with it um, but it's taken me a long time I have to understand that even if the people have apologized even if that person hasn't apologized I need to work on the workings of my soul okay and heal from that that's very important so the second point is whether your pain is validated or not, you have to heal anyway. Okay. So sometimes, um, you know, have you been in a situation whereby like somebody might do something and maybe you might go to the person and say, Hey, you know, and, and I think maybe you did A, B, C, and D to me. And the person will be like, Oh, this small thing that I did, you're offended, you know? So the person might not necessarily validate your pain. Actually, a lot of narcissists, if you've been with a narcissist before, if you've dated a narcissist before where they gaslight you a lot, um, it can put you in a position whereby um, you feel like your healing will not be made perfect unless the person that hurt you validates that. So somebody who's a narcissist who gaslights you and does not validate your pain and actually thinks, oh, you're too much. You have too much drama, A, B, C, and D. So what you've gone through, the pain that you've experienced, they don't recognize it, right? 
if you just if you wait for a narcissist to come and apologize before you heal from the trauma of dating a narcissist then you're going to you're going to experience it for a really really long time and it will take the grace of god so don't allow somebody's invalidation of your pain hinder you from your healing process once you come to god and you understand that you put yourself in the presence of people who because of their own negative psychological self-esteem issue have sort of rendered you some sort of pain um you just have to recognize that and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to deal with that pain. So don't wait for the validation of somebody's, you know, don't wait for the validation of someone's pain that they caused you before you can start your healing journey. That's going to prolong it. Just go right into it. Allow the Holy Spirit to work a work on you. And trust me, it's not easy. I know it's not easy. It's a daily conscious effort because if you don't deal with that especially when you've dated a narcissist before you would end up falling into that cycle because whenever you meet another narcissist you will be waiting for the person to validate the pain that you've experienced in your past and they won't do that that's the kicker the person or persons are not going to do that so you're going to keep you know involving yourself in that cycle and going to compound the pain and the trauma and then if you're not careful you're going to lose yourself in the process you're going to lose your self-esteem you're going to lose the, the 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 will and purpose you're actually going to forget who you are in God and who you are in Christ Jesus. So don't allow the invalidation of someone's pain that they caused you to prevent you from dealing with your healing or starting with your healing process. Many of us are too proud to heal due to our sense of entitlement. Yes, yes. A lot of us actually delay our healing journey from our traumas because we're too proud you know we feel like ah how dare this person treats me this way or like who 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 is he who is she like the person that like she doesn't know me like only me and i like why did this person do me so like you know so because we feel like we're entitled to some sort of like a me or b you know like how dare you how dare you treat me this way so because we feel so proud of we are the way we are and we feel like we have a sense of ent entitlement we delay our healing because we are expecting that ah, who is this person it's the person's responsibility to come and apologize it's the person because we feel entitled you know so that won't help us that will not help us in dealing with our traumas okay like if we've been hurt by a parent you know growing up and maybe you've gotten to a certain point maybe you're the one taking care of your parent you you are proud you feel like ah so your father should come and apologize your mother should come and apologize and because they haven't apologized oh then i'm not going to take care of them again i'm not going to help them again i'm not gonna you know be there for them again you know because of our pride you know so do not let the sense of entitlement and the spirit of pride prevent us from healing from the traumas of our past. They do us no good at all. Wholeness cannot thrive in the muds of self-centeredness. And sort of this kind of wires into it. You know, for us to be whole, it has to be outside of us. We are made whole through Christ Jesus. We're not made whole because of our personal accomplishments or goals or our makeups or things we do, our articulation, the things we say and all of that. We are made whole through the finished work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. We are made whole because we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. We have been made whole because we are children of God. We have been bought at the price so our wholeness from the from our wholeness from being translated into traumatic experiences into full awareness of who we are and our authority that we hold in christ jesus cannot work if we're self-centered if we're looking at us we're looking at what we can do and how we can help ourselves that's not gonna work we have to understand that our full wholeness rests in god and not in ourselves so that's very important um oh i love this it says pain perverts our need for intimacy that is a big one how many of us like have changed 
the way we relate to others based on how other people have treated us like i am less trusting of people because of my past i am i'm like a big doubter like it takes me a while to really believe what people say because i used to be very gullible you know for one i used to be very gullible where like i would believe everything people say because there was once upon a time i hadn't really been through the rings of life so i let me mean like they were on crawl 40 so if like i'm here and somebody says oh I'll, I'll call you back right now like i sit on the phone faithfully because i'm thinking they'll call me back and i ended up just bruising my heart a lot because they're, they're not gonna call you back or somebody say i'll be there fine like i'm a stickler for time like i'm looking at my five o'clock why are you not here and i was just putting myself through unnecessary pain and trauma because i was just too trusting i'm also too gullible you know life happens you know somebody might say something and they might have to change their mind or you know people change might decide that whatever they said to you they're not gonna honor it again you know it's okay it's life just get over it right it, it, it doesn't sound pretty but that's the truth don't you hurt yourself unnecessarily if you become too sensitive to the changing scenes of life yes sometimes we become wiser right if you, let's say you you dated a narcissist <gasps> and they treated you really bad you learn from it next time you recognize the red flags so you don't go and date another narcissist right yeah th those that's knowledge and that that's wisdom but that doesn't mean that because of the pain that was caused by somebody else in the past you're going to keep bleeding on people who didn't hurt you so because of how i was treated in my past relationship when i get into a new relationship i'm questioning everything they tell me you know that's not going to develop the relationship that's not going to help the relationship heal yes i'm recognizing if there are red flags and calling the people on it and saying hey you do a b c and d based on the track record that i have seen in the past this is how it is i have a conversation with the person but i cannot bleed on the people who do not hurt me i cannot bleed on the people who did not cause me the pain and that is very important if we do not heal from the traumas and issues of our past we will continue to bleed on the people who did not hurt us and that is not going to help us when you're in pain, you'd have to find yourself in the presence of God. That's one key. We cannot heal completely if we don't find ourselves in the presence of God. There are times, you know, that you can just, you know, put on worship songs and just stay in the presence of God and tell God why what the person did has broken you and just ask him to keep and restore you. I do that a lot in, in the past and that it is for my own benefit because it helps me to become a better person and to make sure that I'm not being bitter, you know, against the people who have hurt me because that is not, that is not helpful. When I'm bitter towards the people that have hurt me, I'm stalling my own blessing. I'm stalling my own progress. So I spent years and not progressing in a lot of pain and a lot of hurt you know and then you know you end up you know being depressed and anxious and and and, and just carrying all these guilt of this trauma because you're just holding on to it but if you find yourself back in the presence of god he says cast all your cares upon me because i care then when that happens he is going to heal and restore and glorify himself in you and through you so stay in the presence of god that's the only way you're going to heal through that trauma you know drinking is not going to help it eating is not going to i emotionally i ate you no know, eat a lot when i get stressed and i get hurt i know i pour out my frustration on food that's not healthy there are people who do alcohol and drugs and people do sex and all sorts of things that is not helpful only the presence of god has the power to heal and restore and bring us to our place of a divine accomplishment where we can be everything that god wants us to be you cannot heal and be a victim at the same time Ooh. 
<clears throat> you cannot heal and be a victim at the same time. So to be able to heal, you have to let go of the victim mentality. They did it to me. Yeah, I, I, I'm the one that's hurt. You don't know what I have been through. You don't know the pain that I have experienced. You don't know what I am. Yeah, yes. I say that a lot <laughs> in therapy. You know, I'm the one that's hurt. I, 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 it's all about me. I am the victim. The victim mentality will stall you from your healing. Yes, they did it to me. Okay, I'm not going to let that hold me down. I am going to progress from being a victim to being a healed woman, to being um, a better person. Yeah, they did it to me. Okay, life goes on. I'm not going to allow myself to continually dr drown in victimhood and prevent my total healing. So allowing the victim mentality and feel like, oh yeah, I'm the one that blah, blah, blah is not going to be helpful in the long run. You can do that in the beginning when you're trying to find the sort of the rhythm and try to really figure out the extent of the damage that has been caused, but you can't continue to be a victim. You can't continue to identify as victim, okay? Because whatever it is, the whatever mess has been caused or you have experienced, you can change that. So you can translate that victimhood into something victorious through Christ Jesus. It's not easy. This takes a lot of years of spending time in the presence of God, the study of the word. Sometimes we may need therapy. You know, sometimes you may just need wholesome discussion with men and women of God, with peers that have gone through the same thing and know wisdom from other people that can counsel you and help you to heal through that process. But we cannot continue to dwell be victims we have to change our mentality and be able to heal from the traumas of our lives you can hide in God for healing I already said that there's the presence of God the healing is in the presence of God okay whatever you're doing with your pain you have to give it to God whatever you're doing with what hurt you you have to give it to God yes they said they were they weren't gonna leave you but they left they said that we're going to be there for you for the rest of your life. But they laughed. They lied. They looked you right in the face. You were innocent. You hadn't done anything to deserve what they did, but they did it. You have to hide in God to be able to deal with that pain. You can't just look at that pain face value. Yes, the person disappointed you. You gave them your money. They came to ask you to 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 help them, but then they 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 failed to bring back the money they borrowed give it to God. We can only hide our pain in God because that's the only way we can be healed. And then to understand that we're human too. Everybody is human too. We are not perfect. Okay. We're not perfect. So only God can give us a complete healing. We need to come out of isolation and give our pain to God. There are many of us just in conclusion. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what has been dealt to you but i know that we live in a very dangerous and sad world where unfortunately people take advantage of innocent people and hurt them in ways that is hard to heal from but i just want to encourage you today that don't let the pain that has been dealt you put you in isolation sometimes we become so victimized that we want to hide because letting other people hear even how we have been shamed how we have been hurt sometimes like or like it's sad sometimes it, it's heartbreaking so a lot of us go into isolation we create our little bubble and we try to hide in and because we feel that you know isolation has safety in it but i just want to encourage you it doesn't matter the pain, it doesn't matter the hurt that you've experienced. You can only be rested in Christ Jesus. And that's not a cliche, that's the truth. That's the power of Christ. That's the power of the blood. In Him we move and have our being. Are you frustrated? Are you sad? Have you been hurt? Have you been disappointed by the people you love? 
don't hide in isolation. It's time to come out. It's time to burst out. It's time to forge forward. It's time to push through. God has his hand on you. Don't let the pain you've experienced prevent you from honoring God and from doing that which God has called you. I went into hiding for years based on the hurt other people had hurt me. You know, I cut everybody off for years. Nobody knew where I was because I was dealing with pain, you know. But where did it take me? Nowhere. So we cannot isolate ourselves. We are not an island. We still need people, you know. So come out of your shell. Allow the wisdom of God to guide you in helping you choose the right relationship. And you'd be surprised. I'm so blessed that God surrounds me now with great people, great relationships that, you know, I can, you know, look at and be blessed. And, you know, in my times when I don't understand things, you know, there are people I can call and speak to, you know, and there are sometimes, because the thing is, if you go in isolation, it's very easy for the enemy to play on your mind. I made certain stupid decisions in my life because I was in isolation because the devil tricked me to believe that nobody cared about me. Nobody was going to be there for me. And I was all alone by myself. No, God has placed you in the heart of people who care about you, who are praying for you, who are rooting for you, who want the best at her. And most importantly, we have a great cloud of witnesses who are looking at us and are waiting for the manifestation of God concerning your life. So don't hide in isolation. Hold on. Press on. Be healed. Overcome that trauma. And the Lord your God will continue to be your strength. Be the light of the world. Love others even when they hurt you. Um, and just be the best you can and God give us all strength. I love you and God richly bless you.